Hey guys, uh, on today's episode, uh, we're going to travel out west to a musical that would become one of the greatest musicals ever written. No, I'm not talking about Kansas City. I'm talking about that Surrey with a fringe on top. I'm talking about... Oklahoma is the first musical written by the duo of Rodgers and Hammerstein. Um, set in a farm country outside the town of Claremore in Indian Territory in 1906, it tells the story of a farm girl, Lori Williams, and her courtship by two rival suitors, uh, cowboy Curly McLean and the sinister and frightening farmhand, Judd Fry. Building on the innovations of the early showboat, uh, Oklahoma epitomized the development of the book musical a musical play in which the songs and dances are fully integrated into a well-made story that is able to evoke genuine emotions other than amusement. The original Broadway production opened on March 31st of 1943 at the St. James Theater in New York City. The production ran for 2,212 performances, finally closing on May 29th of 1948. Over the five-year span of Oklahoma, the musical would hit a Broadway record, which would not be taken until My Fair Lady in 1956. Fun fact, the Tony Awards and other awards now given for achievement in musical theater were not in existence in 1943, and therefore, the original production of Oklahoma received no theatrical awards. Honestly, such a shame to a musical that would become one of the greats. Well, in 1941, Teresa Helburn of the New York City Theater Guild saw a summer stock production supplemented with traditional folk songs and score dances and thought, geez, this could be the basis of a musical that would help revive the struggling guild. So she decided to contact Richard Rogers and Lawrence Hart. After obtaining rights for him and Hart, uh, Rogers reached out to Oscar Hammerstein II to help collaborate. Hammerstein had assured Rogers that if Hart was ever unable to work, that he would be willing to take his place. Well, in 1942, Hammerstein would take over as book writer after Hart lost interest in the show due to finding the farmers and the cowhands a bit corny and uninspiring. This new partnership allowed both Rogers and Hammerstein to follow their preferred writing methods. Hammerstein preferred to write a complete lyric before it was set to music, and Rogers preferring to set completed lyrics to music. This basically allowed Hammerstein to craft the lyrics into a fundamental part of the story so that the songs could amplify and intensify the story instead of diverting it. Now this is where it gets important. Uh, between both world wars, roles in musicals were usually filled by actors who could sing. However, Rodgers and Hammerstein chose conversely to cast singers who could act which resulted in casting performers who were more dramatically appropriate for the roles. The production was choreographed by Agnes DeMille, uh, her first time choreographing a musical on Broadway. She provided one of the show's most notable and enduring features, a 15-minute first act ballet finale, referred to as the Dream Ballet, depicting Lori's struggle to evaluate her suitors, Judd and Curly. The first title given to the show was Away We Go, Expectations for the show were very low, given the production had no stars, but Rodgers and Hammerstein remained confident. Uh, of the changes made before the show went to Broadway, two would prove very significant. The dramatic restaging of the show-stopping musical number Oklahoma, and the decision to retitle the musical after that show-stopping hit. After the show opened on Broadway, in raves from critics, selling out in its entire run and winning the Pulitzer Prize, Brooks Atkinson wrote, Oh, what a beautiful morning changed the history of musical theater. After a verse like that, sung to a buoyant melody, the banalities of the old musical stage became intolerable. During the Broadway run, the first of several national tours began in New Haven, Connecticut in 1944. The tour would gross $15 million, reaching 250 cities and resulting in the USO sponsoring a tour to U.S. military bases in 1945. By 1953, the show would reach 20 million people in over six different countries. 
This all prompted a West End transfer in 1947, resulting in rave press house reviews and completely sold out houses, running for 1,543 performances. In 1949, the production would open at His Majesty's Theatre in Melbourne, Australia, then transferring to the Theatre Royale in Adelaide, the Theatre Royale in Sydney, and then finally His Majesty's Theatre in Brisbane by 1950. The Broadway Theatre would play host to Oklahoma's first revival in 1951, running for 100 performances. In 1953, the show would celebrate its 10th anniversary with a second revival at New York City Center, running for a limited engagement of 40 performances before going on tour. A third revival would open in 1979 at the Palace Theatre on Broadway, running for 293 performances before starting a cross-country national tour starting at the Pantages Theatre in Los Angeles. The following year, in 1980, Oklahoma would see its first revival in the West End, beginning at the Haymarket Theatre in Leicester, eventually setting, settling in at the Palace Theatre in London. In 1982, the production would see its first Australian revival, playing at the Adelaide Festival Theatre, transferring to the Theatre Royale in Sydney, then to Her Majesty's Theatre in Melbourne, concluding at Her Majesty's Theatre in Brisbane by 1983. The success of its West End and Australian revivals prompted a second revival to take place in the West End, this time welcoming the Wolverine himself, Hugh Jackman, as Curly, and young Frankenstein's monster creation, Schuler Hensley, as Judd Fry. The production received nine Olivier Award nominations, winning for Outstanding Musical Production, Supporting Actor, Set Design, and Choreography. The production was filmed live and issued on DVD, as well as being broadcast on U.S. public television in November of 2003. The live recording was given a limited theatrical re-release on July 16th and 19th of 2023, celebrating the musical's 80th anniversary. As if the show couldn't get any better, it was announced in 2002 the London Revival would transfer back to Broadway for a fourth revival at the Gershwin Theatre, currently home to Broadway's Wicked. The production was nominated for seven Tony Awards, winning for Best Revival of a Musical, Best Featured Actress in a Musical, and Best Featured Actor in a Musical. The musical was also nominated for nine Drama Desk Awards, winning for Outstanding Featured Actor in a Musical and Best Choreography. Ben Brantley of the New York Times wrote Anthony Ward's harmoniously curved set, in which the sky seems to stretch into eternity, again pulses with the promise of a land on the verge of transformation. Finally, in 2019, a 75th anniversary staging of Oklahoma transferred to Broadway's Circle in the Square Theater, from Brooklyn's St. Anne's Warehouse, becoming the fifth Broadway revival. The production was an intimate, immersive, in-the-round style, set in a community hall with chili and cornbread served to the audience at intermission. The production was nominated for eight Tony Awards and won for Best Revival of a Musical and Best Featured Actress in a Musical for Ali Stroker, who is the first wheelchaired actress to win a Tony. The success of the 75th anniversary staging prompted a third Western revival in May of 2022 at the Young Vic in London for a seven-week limited run. After transferring to the Wyndham Theatre, the production would win the 2023 Lawrence Olivier Award for Best Revival of a Musical. Oklahoma not only had success runs on the stage, uh, but also had its stardom on the screen. Starting in 1955, Rodgers and Hammerstein personally oversaw the film to prevent the studio from making the changes that were then typical of stage-to-film musical ad adaptations, such as interpolating new songs by others. The film would go on to win Academy Awards for Best Music and Scoring of a Musical Picture and Best Sound Recording. In all, Oklahoma was an unprecedented critical and popular success. It was the first fully integrated musical play, and its blending of song, character, plot, and even dance serve as the model for Broadway shows for decades to come. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to today's video. If you enjoyed this, please comment on what you liked or disliked. I'd love to hear from you. 
And if you want to see other videos like this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, that's a wrap.